Hi, welcome to a lecture on quadrature hybrids. Quadrature hybrids are devices which go by various other names. Uh, for example, quadrature couplers, 90 degree hybrids. These are usually the same thing. The idea in a quadrature hybrid is that you have a four port device with the ports labeled in a particular way here, one, two, three, four, going clockwise around this device. For the purpose of this video, we'll consider it to be lossless, just to simplify the analysis, and this is often a reasonable approximation. And the idea, which is normally depicted for a quadrature hybrid, is that port one is the input, ports two and three are often shown as the output, and the two outputs are 90 degrees phase shifted. In other words, one is 90 degrees out of phase with the other one which is the reason why we refer to it as a quadrature hybrid. The fourth port here in uh, the application, which is implied by this labeling, is uh, said to be isolated. Now, these terms can be a little bit misleading, and the reason is because this device has a lot of symmetry. You can use these ports in a lot of different ways. This can be a divider, it can be a combiner, it can be a coupler, uh, there's lots of uses. So first, let's consider what it is that makes a quadrature hybrid a quadrature hybrid. And the easiest way to spell it out is in terms of S parameters. So what I'm doing here is showing the four port S parameters for this device. Now, four port S parameters work just like three port S parameters work just like two port S parameters. There's just more of them. So I can define the behavior of a four port in terms of its S parameters and this is what they are for the quadrature hybrid. I've color coded these to facilitate a easier to follow explanation. So first, let's consider S11, S22, S33, and S44. Remember, those are just the voltage reflection coefficients at each one of the ports. Well, for a quadrature hybrid, they are all zero, which means no reflections from the ports. Now these four S parameters, which I'm highlighting now, have to do with isolation. These are S41 and S32, S23 and S14. The fact that these are all zero for the quadrature hybrid says that we have perfect isolation between ports, which are on the same side. That is, between ports 1 and 4, and ports 2 and 3. So in other words, if we were to use this as a divider, with the input being port 1, then we know that port 4 would be isolated. S21 and S31 here are non-zero. S21 and S31 describe how this behaves as a quadrature divider, because S21 and S31 are describing the responses at ports two and three with respect to port one. So for these S parameters, port one is the input and ports two and three are the output. So this is the behavior as a divider. And we see here that the magnitude is the same. We just have a 90 degree phase shift. Specifically, we see that port two is 90 degrees ahead of port three. The S parameters S12 and S13 are also non-zero. These two parameters describe the behavior of this four port as a quadrature combiner. So here we're talking about ports two and three as inputs and port one as the output. And we see that the inputs are being combined with equal magnitude and a phase shift of 90 degrees. The S parameters S24 and S34 are once again non-zero, equal, and 90 degrees out of phase. So this is once again describing a divider where port four is the input, ports two and three remain the outputs. Finally, S42 and S43 are S parameters, which are equal in magnitude and 90 degrees out of phase. These two S parameters are describing the behavior as a perfect quadrature combiner. 
That is, when signals are applied to ports 2 and 3, and port 4 is the output. So what we see is we have two ways to make dividers, the two ways to make combiners, and in all four cases, we have these 90 degree phase shifts going on. Now be careful, all of this presumes that all ports are actually terminated into an impedance Z0. If the ports aren't terminated into Z0, then this is not going to be exactly right. So all of this depends on good matching at all four of the ports. And in that case, this is the set of S parameters describing the behavior of this four port device. So what can we use this kind of thing for? Well, you can of course use it as a divider. This was something we inferred from the S parameters. In the divider application, or one of the two possible ways to do this as a divider, you could have the input at port one, and you could split that input two ways, namely to ports two and three. Port two would get a minus 90 degree phase shift. Port three would get a 180 degree phase shift. And there you have it, a quadrature divider. Now, I should point out that oftentimes, we describe one of the ports as being zero degrees and the other as being plus 90. And all that's happening there is we're adding 180 degrees to both of the outputs. The phase relationship between output and input is often not uh, considered significant. Rather, we're more concerned about the phase difference between the outputs. Not in all cases, but in many cases. So if you see this kind of specification or labeling for a quadrature divider, that's what's going on there. Now, what would you use such a thing for? Well, in fact, there are many uses. In many cases in RF engineering, we have one signal and we'd like to create a second copy of that signal with a 90 degree phase shift. For example, creating quadrature local oscillator signals for various kinds of frequency converters, uh, among other applications. Now, before moving on, let me just point out two more things. You can also do all of this with port four as the input and port one terminated. Right? We saw this in the S parameters. So there is no problem with switching these two ports so that you have the input going into port 4 and the isolated port being port 1. And the resistor that you hang off the isolated port would receive no power. It would be there purely for matching because remember, all these ports have to have matched terminations and everything would work the same way except 4 would be the input instead of 1. Furthermore, you can do both things at the same time. In other words, you can apply a signal to port one and have it appear at ports two and three with a 90 degree phase shift. And at the same time, you can apply a signal to port four and have it appear at ports two and three with a 90 degree phase shift. You can do both of these things at the same time. And there are various applications for exactly that. Now, in that case, neither ports 1 nor 4 require this matching resistor. You simply apply the signals directly to the ports. When used as a combiner, this is the picture that you might think of. Here, ports 2 and ports 3 are the inputs. Port 2 gets a minus 90 degree phase shift and arrives at port 1. The signal at port 3 gets a 180 degree phase shift and arrives at port 1. And port 4 is isolated. Uh, we simply hang a resistor off of that. And as before, you can also do this with 4 as the output and 1 as uh, simply being terminated. Or you can do both of these things at the same time. So you can apply signals to ports 2 and 3. You'll get one version of that at port 1 and another version of the combined signal at port four, and you can do it all at the same time. As long as all the ports are matched, everything's good. One reason quadrature hybrids are so popular is because they're pretty easy to implement, and there's a bunch of different ways to implement them. A particularly easy and convenient implementation is the branch line coupler. So a branch line coupler is a four port device, which is well described as a quadrature hybrid. In a branch line coupler, we have four sections of transmission line arranged like so in a ring. 
and ports 1, 2, 3, and 4 are attached to nodes between these transmission lines. Each transmission line is lambda by 4, that is one quarter wavelength. And the characteristic impedances of these transmission lines have a very specific value, namely Z0 on these vertical sections and Z0 divided by the square root of 2 on these horizontal sections. So if you do this, you have these four sections of transmission lines with these lengths and these characteristic impedances, you have a branch line coupler. Now, a couple things to note here. First, such an implementation is going to be narrowband. That is, it'll only be perfect at the frequency at which these line lengths are actually one quarter wavelength. And away from that frequency, this will obviously not be exactly a quadrature hybrid. Nevertheless, they tend to have pretty broad bandwidth. Another thing to note here is the similarity to the Wilkinson divider combiner. The Wilkinson device also uses quarter wave lengths of transmission line and similarly has this feature of having very, very high isolation between sets of adjacent ports. One more thing to consider. How do we know that this particular structure gives us the S-parameter matrix of a quadrature hybrid? In other words, I simply presented this. I didn't derive it. I didn't analyze it. I simply say that this is a four-port, which is well described as a quadrature hybrid. Well, if you want to confirm that this works like a quadrature hybrid, the way to do it is using a technique known as even-odd mode analysis. It's not very hard to do. It's a little bit tedious, but it's a useful thing to do if you specifically are curious about why this turns out to have the S parameters of a quadrature hybrid. Now, I should also say here that there's a lot of mythology out there about how these things work. So often in the literature or on web pages or in certain application notes, you'll read descriptions about how this structure works, and they're not exactly right. Uh, I don't really know a way to analyze this or to confirm its behavior other than even an odd mode analysis. I don't think there's a simpler way to verify that it has these characteristics. A particular implementation of a branch line coupler, and hence a quadrature hybrid, is shown here. Here we have ports one, two, three, and four. We see the transmission lines, we see the characteristic impedances, and we note here that the lines on the top and the bottom here are wider. They're wider because their characteristic impedance is smaller. Other four port devices, which also act like quadrature hybrids, include the coupled line coupler and the Lang coupler. And there are probably many others. There are certainly waveguide versions of these things as well. So there are many ways to obtain a device which acts like a quadrature hybrid. And once you have a quadrature hybrid, there's all kinds of useful things you can do with it. That concludes this lecture on the quadrature hybrid.